Sure. They thought they did. That's right. And, and, that, and we see that all, I see it all the time. Sure. They get out there, because I've been doing this for a long time. And they get out there and all of a sudden, yeah, yeah Kennedy, you were right. I really didn't get sure. That doesn't mean that they were bad people or bad prosecutors. Some of them were very good prosecutors. Yes. Um, and, you know, I'm concerned that that's kind of what we got here. And I just want to touch on one other thing, your drug court. Sure. And I have to confess, I'm not a huge fan of drug courts. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Right. There's two reasons why. Okay. And part of it will touch on the nominee. Number one is, you know, I'm not sure I like the way they operate. Because, you know, a lot of times the defendant's not in the room. When decisions are being made about the defense, sure. And I have a huge problem with that from the perspective of the of our constitution. Sure. Okay. You sit there in a committee. There might be a, there's usually a defense lawyer. There's a prosecutor. There's a probation officer. There's a judge who decides whether we're going to put this person in the can. Yes. Okay. And then the decision is made before that person has a chance to say anything. Yes. So I have a huge philosophical with that. Okay. A philosophical problem with that. All right. That's fair. And and I won't. Agree to put my clients in drug court for that reason. Okay. Okay. There are other alternatives out there, and I always look to the other alternative. My second problem with drug court is a simple one, and this touches on parole. Um, when you're making that decision, the decision is well, they failed. They failed the urine. And I'm going to touch on the issues uh, that Council Jumbo, I'm sure, is going to address a lot. Uh, they fail the urine. So what do you do? <coughs> you spank. You lock them up. You put them in jail. Okay. And, us. We and, don't do that. Well, sometimes you do. Sometimes you put them in jail till you get them in a program. Uh, well, they I, do it in the drug courts, and you know that. Um, I can only speak to what, how we handle things. I can okay. only tell you how we do things. Well, okay. I've seen it over and over. All right, let's put them in jail for a week, teach them a lesson. Mm -hmm. sure. All right? Sure. It's, a, it's on your tool belt, and it's a tool that sometimes... It, that's used a lot. Work. I can't speak to that. Concept. I can't. It's used a lot. Fair enough. So, so no other crime committed. Yeah. Somebody who has who has an addiction problem, yep. a medical problem, yep. is locked up for simply failing you. Yes. Well, I'm completely opposed to that, and we don't do that in our court, and that's all I can tell you. Because okay. relapse so, is part of recovery, and we understand. It. Yeah. So what happens on the parole board when someone flunks a urine? Is 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 the attorney McCarthy going to send them back? Well, I can tell you what I. What, from my personal and professional experience, my sense is that she will reflect on what the work that we've done in the drug court and will have a more enlightened and progressive understanding, enhancing what she already had because I saw that when she was a prosecutor. So I can only speak to what we do, sir, and how we handle things. A um, couple things you said. You're opposed to it because the defendant's not in the room. Well, the defendant's not in the room when you're negotiating with the DA about the disposition, but that puts the defendant out. Well, I just want to finish. But I want to finish. No, no, just but I want to finish. finish. You finish, go ahead. Well, so, so the defendant's not in the room then or on the phone with you when you're calling the DA to talk about a potential disposition. So defendants, general, hold on, I just want to finish. Defendants are generally not in the room, but what we are sensitive to is the fact that their interests must be represented, which is what our system is, the principle is based on, which is why we have in our court, and I'm gonna tell you about my court, not that I'm here you know, promoting my court, but I'd love for y'all to come down and check us out sometime, okay? Um, we assign a defense attorney to the person upon their entry to the program, not just a random defense attorney. We assign a defense attorney who pro bono is offering their time and walks with that participant throughout their entire time in the process and has conversations with them that we're not privy to. We don't get involved in that, and they <laughs> very uh, strenuously represent their interests. And we've had arguments professionally, just like y'all just had. Right. So it's good to see that y'all are still getting along, too, from the, from, along. from the time that I was here before. <laughs> what? It's early, it's early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some things never change, and that's, that's okay. But my point is, is that we understand that, sir. We do understand that, and that's why we have defense counsel in the room. But 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 this is different, Judge. It's well, there's always a difference. Yes, there's a difference. If when I'm negotiating with Prosecutor McConnell, yes, and I'm negotiating a deal, yes, the decision as to whether to accept that, yes, goes to my client. Agreed. When you are deciding what to do with him in a in a, in a closed room that he's not there, agreed. He doesn't get to participate in that decision. Agreed. And but that's that's a huge difference, or even here. He doesn't get to grab that way that's represented and say, and tell him this and tell him Agreed. that. Agreed. Like happens at a trial. Now, I'm just going to tell you this, and then I guess we can move on to another topic, because now we're going to 
and it's a constitutional law. And I used to be a uh, law school professor. And I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and I've read a case since 1983 when okay. I came your, 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 your rights are, and I'm sure everyone in this room knows this, your rights post-conviction are not the same as your rights pre-conviction. So you don't have the same due process rights. You don't have the same the rules of evidence don't apply to probation proceedings. So we're talking about a different animal here. So when you compare apples and oranges, yeah, it's all fruit, counselor. But we're talking about different uh, different stage in the process. Judge, we're going to agree to disagree on that. Yes, sir. I, I respect that. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. I had my not spoken. Thank you. Good to see you, Judge. Thank you very much. Good to see you, sir. Judge, you'll acknowledge most of the folks here today have never heard of a nominee before she was uh, nominated by the governor. They're here for the sole purpose she's a prosecutor. Let me ask, so, first of all, you understand where they come from, 100%. Let's assume this nominee from Springfield, who you know, was not sitting in that chair. <coughs> but someone, I live in Jamaica Plain, someone in Jamaica Plain who you have you never met, you know nothing about him or her, yeah. with the same qualifications. Yeah. From what I understand of you, well, you tell me, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Are you more apt to say, not another prosecutor, enough is enough? Uh, I would, I would, I would be lying if I said that that sentiment wouldn't cross my spirit. Of course, yeah. of course, I'd be lying. I'm not a liar. I'm not an um, but I was raised right, so I would look to somebody who knew that right, and I would say, "What can you tell me about?" That? You know, um, when I got started, I went to a guy who did um, personal injury. When I got out of law school, right, personal injury. Uh, dog bite cases and auto accident cases and things of that nature. That's how I came up. Um, it wasn't what I envisioned. It wasn't the romantic um, view I had of myself coming out of law school. But I had to make a living. And I had to make a living. I had to do something to make a living to pay bills and pay my student loans, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that the fact that Karen McCarthy took an opportunity to become a prosecutor and has earned a living and supported her family as a prosecutor should not be held against it. I don't, I don't see that as fair any more than the fact that I was a personal injury lawyer uh, or, or, or I represented criminal defendants should be held against me because that's what I did. I had to make a living. So I would rely on people who knew her because I think that's common sense. Common sense, which sometimes um, uh, is not as common as we like. You know, common sense is, what do you know about this guy? Tell me about this guy. What do you know about this guy? Not me. You want to hear about me? <laughs> But I'd ask you, I don't know this guy, you can't even, I don't know this man. What do you know about this guy? And if I know you and I trust you and you vouch for him, then that tells me a little bit. That's not the sole basis for my decision. It's not just positive, but I certainly am going to rely on that process. It's just common sense. That's, that's wisdom. That's what you're supposed to do. I appreciate the answer, but based upon that, it's fair to say you'd have no problem supporting every single member of the parole board that was law enforcement based upon your answer. In other words, now hold on. I think based it's upon, theory. I think it's theory. Yes. Yes. I understand. And I look at it differently. Sure. sure. And everyone can look at it differently. Sure. These folks have been here not only today, but they've been here a lot. Sure. They've been here for the last one, the before that, sure. before that. Sure. And you know what? I've been thinking about this for a long time since this point which was brought before us. I've read the nominees questionnaire. I've read and I've talked to people in Springfield. I know a lot of folks in Springfield. Personal injury lawyers. I do a lot of personal injury myself. All right. I've been Jerry Pellegrini and I yeah, I know a lot of folks out there. There's no doubt that she's qualified for the position. But for these folks here who say enough is enough is enough. You know, we can make nice speeches up here today, but the speeches are not the vote. And I'm going to tell these people, I made a commitment when I ran for re-election. I was in every single neighborhood, and you know what I what I made? I told people, I want to support people in that parole board who understand mental illness. I want to support people on the parole board who know addiction and know about it. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the folks who are here and 
Ms. McCarthy's behalf. But you know what? Enough is enough is enough. I'm not going to make good speeches today, but I'm going to tell you today. You don't have to send me any more emails. I'm voting no. You don't have to send me an email. It's the people who don't say how they're voting. This is a this is gonna be a super, super close vote. If I had to bet, she's going broke. If I had to bet, but not on my vote. Right. Yes, sir. That was a good speech. Yes, sir. That was a good speech. Yeah, that was a good speech. And I respect that. Okay. So what can I tell you? Except I respect where you're coming. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Council Jewel. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Judge, it's good to see you here, and you, I, I, I you know too. you run a good court out there. You, you, I'd love to have you stop by and visit. Well, I was in uh, uh, Superior Court in Northampton on Monday okay. and didn't make it to Northampton County. I know they are. All right, that's a different they're in the country, they don't do any work. That's though. a different end. They, they, they're done by 1030. Yeah. Now, um, no, you have a good reputation. You know, I'm, I'm from Hoyle, Mass, uh -huh. and I have a lot of friends in Springfield, and West Springfield, and all Long Meadow and family there. That's right. Uh, and I've heard a lot of comments from them, people that I respect. And I certainly respect you and your reputation on that court. Thank you, sir. Would you agree with me that you as a judge, when you sit and you make a decision that some of that thinking about making it is how the citizens will perceive your decision. Ooh, that's a fantastic question, philosophically. Um, I will tell you in all candor, no. Okay, no. <clears throat> okay, so by giving a light sentence to somebody that you could say doesn't deserve it, you don't get into the message you send to of people out in society. No, I think if I were a judge and I did that, then I would be a politician. And we don't have elected judges in Massachusetts. Thank you, good Lord. Okay, I like your answers to that. All right. The difference is, I'm not a judge. I respect that. You are elected. I'm elected. Thanks. So. And you, would you agree with me that the proportion of people in cages, and that's what they are, that's what I call them. You grow up in Springfield? No, I'm from Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. Okay. Did you ever go to Forest Park Zoo? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did too as a little kid. I remember seeing lions in cages and yeah. tigers, remember? Yeah. Do you know that in the United States now, there are no animals in cages? <clears throat> the only thing put in cages today are human beings. Human beings. In yeah. This country. Yeah. And the high majority of them. Are African American, Puerto Rican, Spanish, poor, poor, yeah. and in Massachusetts it's the same way. Yeah. So, how are we going to open that door for the people that are rotting away in these cages? Some of them who haven't even committed a violent crime. How are we going to open that door? And what is the perception we want to send? People sure. in Massachusetts. Sure. All right. How do we open that door? So how much time do I have? Well, two about two minutes. <laughs> two minutes? Yeah. Right. Two minutes. So what I would say is this this is a question that's been asked for, for the ages. How do we remedy the sins of those who came before? Right? Because the, the system was constructed hundreds of years ago, right? And the, the byproduct of this system that was constructed that started with child slavery, and the land slavery. Treating human beings as property. Human beings were created. I know, I know all that created. history. Well, I'm glad you do, but you asked me the question, so I want to answer it. But can I just ask you well, something you first? Can ask me another question. Look, I, I read history all the time. Okay, fair enough. I know what happened yesterday and a week ago and a year ago. Yes. What I want to know is from today. Going forward. Right today. Going forward. How do we open the doors from today? Well, I suppose when you leave here, you're going to see the government. <laughs> I suppose you are. No. Because well, then that's that. If I were you, if I were in your shoes, I'd make sure that I was on that man like white on rice. I was on him like steak on noodles. I'd make sure that he knew how pissed off I was because he keeps sending me the same type of people. Because my okay. friend and colleague here yeah. may suffer as a result of legitimate frustration. She may. 
she may suffer and not get an opportunity. There's, as a there's result of absolutely no question. There's she no may. question. That, and that, and that, that's unfortunate. It, look, well, we, look, we understand. That's look, <coughs> the perception is, the perception is another white prosecutor on the parole board. Right? I do. Yes, I do. Let me just say this. Judge, say this. Judge, I know you're, I know I you're. I respect where people yeah. are coming from. I just want to tell you this. Yeah. This, this lady did not ask me to come here. I, 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 I did not perceive that it would have the, the tenor and the tone that it does. But I'm I'm no shrinking violence, so I'm good. I know that. It's I know. okay by me. Yeah. I was a criminal defense lawyer. So, you know, you can't hate on me more than I've been hated on when I walked in the home. <laughs> I, I represented the worst of the worst. Well, I'm no Alleged. different than you, let right. me tell you. Okay. 41 years of it. So, so what I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that um, she didn't ask me to come here. Yeah. I came here. I, I approached her. And I read the article. Yeah. And was so happy for her good fortune and knew what a qualified person she'd be. And I offered to come. First, I was just going to write a letter. She was like, that would be fine. But then we talked, and I said, no, I want to be there. I'm supposed to be in drug court right now. I got another judge who's covering my drug court because I wanted to come on her behalf. So if that's no, 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 it tells me a lot. Okay, listen, listen. I've gotten tons of emails, I've gotten tons of calls from people in Western Mass. As I said, eight running eight to two against. Okay, but let's assume I take all of that out and I say, forget. Yeah. I'm still stuck with the perception of a white prosecutor, Agreed. and we have so many minorities sitting in cages. Agreed. Agreed. So I you know something. I, I, you have a wonderful reputation. I mean that. I'm not just saying okay. that. I appreciate it. And you run a good court. And you're fair. So it's nothing against you or yeah. Benny Bonjun, who I think is a wonderful guy. Thank and it's nothing against this nominee. Unfortunately, it's what it is for me as an elected official. When I have to go campaign and people say, another prosecutor, Bob? Yeah. What, what are you doing? I understand. I so understand. I can tell you, it ain't going to happen with me. Okay. That's, that's good. <laughs> I love you. I would, I would ask you to simply, I don't know if you've met with Ms. McCarthy personally. If you haven't, no, I no, ask you to do so. Let me say this to you. Yeah. It's not about meeting with her. She's a wonderful woman, I'm sure. That's not the issue with me. It is, as you said, rightly in my view, the circumstances. Sure. We're at, look at the, the political climate is changing drastically throughout the country in Massachusetts. Yeah. You have a new DA in Suffolk County, a whole new program, not arraigning people and all of that. Sure. People are sick and tired of the way they've been treated in the minority communities. And they don't want to be. Sure. And, and I run for an office that I have to convince people that I have the guts to say no. You know, and, that, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a, a beautiful thing. That's the, the fact that people of color are, um, are, are their voices being heard. And that they are participating in numbers like the racial violence and being elected to these important positions is a tremendous statement about the, the reality that you're speaking of. The, the, the change in the economy politically. It's appropriate, it's necessary. I am fully in support of it. As I said earlier, I understand where you guys are coming from. When I'm in Springfield and I hear that there's a new judge that's been appointed and another <coughs> white guy walks in the room, okay? I feel your pain, but I also know the person, and I know they're a good person, and so I celebrate in that regard. And I will say this last thing about meeting with somebody. I talk to people. Like we're talking now, I talk to people on the bench all the time. I get more eye rolls than anybody, from court officers and clerks and everybody. Like, oh, my God, Judge Phil Cooney wrote this one. Because I want to know who you are. Before I make this important decision about your life, I want to know how you got here. Where's your parents, your mother, your father? What, what kind of life have you had? Because I feel that it would be it would be wrong for me to make this important decision if I didn't acknowledge you as a human being. I think it'd be wrong for me to make this important decision if I didn't acknowledge you as a human being. That's all. And if after you talk to her, you judge, make judge, the decision, judge, then you're judge. Good. Yeah. It's not about her. She can't change her past, and she can't change the prosecution, and she can't change the color of her skin. I can't either. 
People felt so, like that about me. So, like me. so, that's why I didn't get out. That's why people like me didn't get opportunity. Exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. So we're good. Then we agree. We will agree because this is a legitimate issue. You know who I'd like to see sitting there right now? It's in the center. Uh, uh, an African American inmate to get out of the prison. I think that's exactly right. <laughs>
Uh, we do. We have received a number of them. I speak for my colleagues. I've received probably about twenty five emails in the days that they go up as well. Um, so you know, I, I appreciate your testimony. One of the other things I just feel needs to be debunked is this notion about prosecutors. You know, I've heard it now for almost a decade. It's, it's once a prosecutor, always a prosecutor. And you know what I found in my experience practicing in district court, superior court is that it's not uncommon that the person who is the prosecutor turns out to be the most understanding and compassionate judge that you can imagine. There's a judge in Dudley District Court named Judge Bebo, who was a former prosecutor. You probably know him through the drug court. One of the most passionate and un lifetime prosecutors. Okay? That's just one example, and there are other examples of people who have been prosecutors who go on to be better judges, more understanding people, more compassionate people than criminal defense lawyers, people who have dedicated their lives to criminal defense. And Council Kennedy and I were just talking about that. Yeah. We know some folks that have recently gone on, career criminal defense lawyers, right? They're supposed to be the most understanding, second chances. They're the worst judges. You can't catch a break. You know, they want to put everybody in jail. Well, I'm not. They won't. They, they won't do a jury waived trial, even if the Commonwealth has a dog with police. They won't do it. So this notion that there's some science that a prosecutor is in this, their brain works this way, and a criminal defense way, it's just not true. Sure. And that's why we, it's our job to drill down and find out if we get the right person for the job. And that's what I intend on doing. And uh, I appreciate your testimony. Your spirit of testimony, you've missed your calling, you could have definitely done stand up. Uh, uh, no, maybe you do a little in the courtroom well, here and there. We do a little church, we do a little therapy, we do a little stand up. We're trying to heal people, we're trying to heal the community and the justice system. Justice is our product. And justice doesn't mean anything if people are not healed and restored and given <coughs> a chance. It doesn't mean anything. Justice is death. But, uh, I'm reminded when I hear when I hear what you said, I'm reminded of what Gandhi said. An eye for an eye makes the whole world. So, you know, we do, if we apply the same standard, if I apply the same standard to somebody as applied to me, I'm just uh, reaffirming the old adage that you want to be. And you know, as I'm sitting here as a woman, I'm a little taken aback, you know, there's a woman sitting in this chair, yeah. you know, and you talk about a, a, a group of gal, a group of people who have been discriminated against over history. Sure. Okay? Sure. So I take offense to that, and I, I hope people are more sensitive and back off from that because, you know what, uh, it, it's not right to sit here and, and berate or, or talk about a person's race because she's sitting in a chair because she's a certain race. That's appalling. Let's let's get stick to the merits. It's 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 what happened to people 30 years ago that, that everybody's railing against. Now you're doing it today. Knock it off. Well, I do understand the concern. I must be candid, so I want to make sure I come back to that because I do too. I get it. We all get it. We don't want they, people don't want all prosecutors on the pro board. We yeah. get it. And I also understand their race concerns. I do. I mean, I'm black. I can be rarely seen, and I will never not be black. And I'm proud to be. And there's no ever changing that. I'm working with black people who are probably not happy with me because I'm up here. They're gonna let you know it's not your walk I'm still gonna be black, and I love who I am. And that, that's not gonna change. Thank you, Judge. Uh, yes, you're very welcome. Yes. Right, you said I said you're going to. I said I said we're going to do lunch at okay. thirty. Okay. 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 Um, first of all, I was proud to vote. Do you have a question? I and I just want to tell you that we don't choose. We have one person to vote yes or no, and that's how it works. We need more minorities. There's no question. Yes. And you know, I learned up here, it's not always popular to do the right thing. Yeah. Three months ago, I voted against a prosecutor, Glory Ann Marone. Now she's the chair. Okay, enough said. But I have to tell you, I was going to wait and, and, and address my uh, comment to Karen. I met with you, and I think you're a, a wonderful person. But it's perception of the parole board. And, and, and I fought for, for Lucy and for Lee, but I can't get them back. I have got that authority. So we replace them with prosecutors, okay? And now we have a chair that's a prosecutor. So I have to tell you, I, I have to vote no. There is no way in my conscience that I can vote yes. And, and I take no joy in that. I take no joy in that, but it's got to stop. And I'm asking my colleagues to join me 
we haven't rejected one person on any board, commission, judge, clerk, magistrate. It's time. It's time. And so I'm telling you, Judge, I am asking my counselors this time, let's get at least that five. I want it unanimous. Let's get five. Thank you. All right. All right. 20 minutes of two. We're going to recess until 10 after two. So that people have a chance to get something. I know you've all been waiting. People are upstairs in hearings. We have not had any lunch. And I, for one, uh, get ill if I don't eat something. 10 after 2.